Let's create our first Elm file so we can start testing out compiling Elm applications. If you go in source and create main.elm, normally all Elm applications have a main.elm file in the source directory with a capital M. And at the top of it, it's gonna have a module declaration. It gives information about this particular Elm file. So ours is module, the name of it is main. It's normal to match the name of the module with the file. And what does it expose? What public functions can others utilize? In our case, we're gonna put dot dot for everything. You could put things in here like my funk yo. And both of those functions would be exposed, including types. We're just gonna do dot dot for now. So now I have a basic Elm file and we can test out the compiler to do it. But you'll notice already that our IntelliSense has given us errors about, hey, something went wrong. So it's running the compiler in the background on your file while you code the Elm compiler. You don't have to manually run it, which is kind of a neat, neat feature. So we're gonna get that exact same error if we make our console a little bit bigger here. We're gonna run Elm make and it's gonna do some cool things even without, whether you get it right or not with the LMA command, it'll intend to install libraries. Now mine's already installed, but you may see it installing libraries here, reading your Elm JSON. Elm is really cool in that if your machine has ever installed it, it'll globally cache it. So it's actually a lot faster than Node Package Manager or Yarn or Pip, for example, or Maven, where it'll cache a lot of those libraries. It doesn't even install them if it knows it already has installed, which is really nice. Our case, Elm make, if you think of it like a function, it requires one parameter. It's like, what, what is your Elm file to actually compile? We gotta pass it a path to our file. So we're gonna say Elm make source main Elm and then it'll compile that if it can. Automatically have a parsing error because there's really nothing in here. There's no declarations, there's no code other than the module. So we have to make some kind of code. So we'll go ahead and add some code here. Say a, b equals a plus b, just like we were doing before our function. And now we notice no errors in here and we can press up on the keyboard so you can rerun the command without having to type it again. So just hit up and it compiled, fantastic. And also you'll notice too, it, creating this Elm stuff folder. If you're used to creating virtual environments in Python, that would be your virtual in folder. If you're in Node, where it installs libraries by default locally, that would be your Node modules. In our case, Elm stuff is all our Elm libraries for our version. So you can ignore this Elm stuff and you can actually not check it in the source control. You can just check in your source code and Elm.json, you can ignore Elm stuff. So it says it compiled it, but it doesn't really say where. It just says that it compiled it and that's not really helpful. If you go to Elm make, help, it'll tell you how you can supply a, a variety of parameters to it. What we're interested in here is output. And almost every single command line parameter has two ways of doing it. You can type in dash dash big word or single dash letter. You can output a file name, either a JavaScript or an HTML file. We're going to clear this out and we'll say L make, press up again. So you can cycle through all the commands you did, including the mis mistakes. And we'll do output, and we'll say build cow.js. 